Hello. My name is Timothy Trespass. And I'm a human being who has found himself targeted with more gallons. And, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, I'm in New York City, in the United States, in the rain. And, um, there was a time when I found this place with all its lights and people and cars and sounds and energy very in, how do you say it, uh, like a muse, uh, encouraging, uh, energizing, uh, anyway, uh, after the traumatic ongoing trauma, I find it a little overstimulating. Um, but, you know, as I'm walking down the street, I come across this little old man who says his name is Mr. Jones, and he's walking, you know, with his head down, and he can barely move. He's walking about, a, a, you know, maybe like about this fast. And he can't see, he's got his head down, and he can't walk, and he's barely making it, and everyone's going, come on, come along, this and the lady's helping him along, and he wants to get to the bus, and take the bus, and the bus is two blocks away, which for him might as well be ten miles, you know, and I'm offering my last couple of dollars if he wants to take a train and whatnot, and, and just the whole thing just really, really rips my heart out, you know, like, I, I understand this sickness and pain and suffering and aging and, and uh, you know, I'm beginning to see the edges of disability and debilitation and, uh, you know, wondering about what my fate is going to be in all this and, and why God makes this this way or allows this this way you know what are we what are we not doing what are we not being allowed to know what are we not learning what are we not using or exercising uh, in our human gift uh, of what we are you know, there are people who, who have amazing uh, abilities of the spirit or the body or the mind or a combination uh, and energies, healing energies and hurting energies and, you know, you know, when I met Petra, there was this moment where her eyes literally sparkled not just like sparkle, but stars shot out of her eyes, like like sparkly. I, I've never seen anything like it. They they literally came out of her eyes. This sparkly, silvery, white. It doesn't even have words to describe the color of this this energy. And I was struck. I've never seen anything like that. And. She said the same thing, she saw the same thing from me, and, you know, and if that's just one little fractional speck of what uh, love or chemistry or, or you know, reconnection of uh, karmic, you know, whatever it is, man. If that's just one little fractional taste of what the human organism, the human being, with the consciousness and the, the soul and the whole thing can, can emanate and, and, you know, what, what are we missing here? And why do we live in a world where everybody has to struggle so hard and those few people make it so. And, you know, we grow old and sick and 
alone without care so easily with people marginalized and pushed off the board into the side, you know, to the street, into the garbage pile on the edge where we throw everything. Why? Why do we allow this? In a world where, where people are exploited, you know, where animals are exploited, where everything is, the earth itself is uh, exploited. I'm in the middle of all this, you know, wondering at what point will my eyesight go? At what point will I have a stroke and no longer be able to speak or use my hands or think properly or, you know, go to the bathroom by myself or am I going to lose my leg from the, the blood clots that I feel? Um, you know, what, how am I going to manage at this point? And, you know, the stories that I hear from these people are horrific and horrendous and, and you know, life is, is so precious and fragile and, you know, what are we, we need to see this to all the people that I'm, you know, it's like, wow, man. What are we doing? At what point does humanity stop and say, you know, all right, well, there's 12 billion of us or something, but we need to change the way we do things so that everybody has a value uh, that is intrinsic in being who they are and not in what they can produce for someone else, how they can be exploited. The one where the laws are just and equitable and not designed to uh, make any one group better or stronger or more profitable than any other. You know, one where everything is provided for you because you're part of the provision, you know, and those people that are, are broken in ways that can't interact in normal ways still have value because they have you know, they're alive, they're, they're, everybody should be included. And I know that that, that kind of system is, is, you know, a dream and a nightmare because, you know, you get the wrong people running bureaucratic stuff and you end up with the same old, same old everything we have already. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a whole new something or other. And, not based on whether your genes are clean or whether you're, you know, you're whatever. I, I, listen, nanotechnology is poised to change the way humanity interacts with its environment. And, you know, it's going to change humanity. And humanity's not ready for that yet. We're still being pushed around and you know the big business right now is in making us sick and selling us junk and I'm trying to change my perspective from seeing all of this crud to recognizing the beauty and the goodness and the, the perfection and the joy and the hope and the faith and the indomitable spirit of goodness and truth. You know, it's like, I know there are, well, anyway, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, God bless you. Free falls and Medicaid. Medicaid.